Hello and welcome to another edition of 10 Minute Joomla Tips. In the past couple of weeks, I got a few emails asking me about moving Joomla sites from one server to another. Now, this is something that I touched in previous screencasts, uh, but never specifically on how to move a site, for instance, from a local server in XAMPP if you're using a PC or MAMP if you're using a Mac to a remote server. Uh, of course, the system is uh, practically identical, whether you're moving from one live server to another live server or from one folder in your server to another folder in your server, it's pretty much the same flow. However, I figured this is something that everybody seems to ask at some point or another. It is a great source of frustration. So here I have a local site you can see that this is on localhost 8080. It's on my PC, not on my Mac. I usually do my local sites on the Mac, but this time I'm using the PC. And I have a site that I've installed called local VM for local Virtumart. And this is a straight installation from the Virtumart self-contained installation that they offer on their site. I haven't touched anything. I just installed it using XAMPP, there is a local database, but that's pretty much it. The goal in this episode is to take this site and move it up to a cPanel based server that I have in a subdirectory since uh, the server I actually use for uh, live websites. So we'll put it in a subdirectory on my live server, but the flow is uh, identical regardless of where you put it. So let's start by taking a look at a few things on the local server. We have the site in a folder called local VM and let's grab the, this is the local VM folder inside the htdocs directory. And if I open it, you can see that there is a fairly normal Virtumart Joomla website here. This is in PHP MyAdmin, the database that's relative to this website. Again, very normal. And PHP MyAdmin is one of those tools that if you work with Joomla, you are better off learning and learning well. It's not very difficult. It can look a little confusing at first, but it's very easy to use. Now let's look at our configuration PHP file. We see that here we have server settings, locale settings, mail settings, we'll ignore that for now, cache settings, meta, SEO, feed, and session settings. In the server setting and database settings, what we need to look at is the database user, the database password, and the database name. Those are very important. Here instead in the feed settings, we had to look at log path and 10 folder path. These are obviously local to our XAMPP installation. They wouldn't look anything like that once we move into the server. In the database settings, the thing that we can see immediately is that we are logged in as root. There is no password and the database has a simple name. When we move over to a cPanel server, this will be quite different. cPanel has its own way of handling things and every server has its own way of handling things. One thing for sure, our password will be there and root won't be our username. Even if we have a dedicated server, you certainly don't want to use root. Now let's take a look at our cPanel. The areas that we are going to need to use here is the file manager so that we can move the files up to the server, the MySQL databases so that we can create a, a new user and assign it to the database and PHP my admin. There are shortcuts you can use like the backups. I can show you that five time. But basically if you upload a database with any name, cPanel will create a new database for you without you having to create one in the database manager. And then you still have to create a new user and assign it. That's not going to change. But if you use backups and you upload a database file here, cPanel will create a database for you. There is no need to create a new one. However, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Let's go back to home and uh, let's click on file manager, which usually opens a new tab and let's go to public HTML. Just for expediency, the first thing that I want to do is create a new folder, which I'll call local VM. Of course, it's not local anymore here, but I'm going to delete it as soon as I'm done. So we don't care and create a new. Let's look for local VM and there it is. And let's open. It. Now let's go back to our local local VM where website is. We are going to select all of this except for these files here, license, install. We're going to leave htaccess text so that we can rename it to .htaccess. Credits and copyright, configuration, PHP, distribution, we're not going to need it. Usually, in fact, I only leave the change log. All the other files I don't need and they could be a security issue. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to save it as a zip file. I'm going to use 7-zip to add it to an archive in zip format and off it goes. And by the magic of editing, 
here is our local VM file. I'm going to copy this path because I'm going to need it. And now let's move back to our cPanel in the file manager. And I'm going to click on upload. This opens yet another tab. And I'm going to choose a file. And that's why I copied the path in my Windows Explorer because now I can enter that. And here I am. And there is the local VM. And local VM starts to upload immediately. And we are done, again, thanks to the magic of video editing. Now if we go back to the file manager, it doesn't show unless we click on reload. And there is our local VM site. Select and click on extract. The path is correct, click on extract files. That was actually that fast, there was no editing involved. And here is our site. Of course it doesn't work right now. Why? Because our configuration PHP file has not been edited yet. But one thing that we can do is delete the archive that we just used to upload the site. Now let's go back to our database manager. Click on MySQL databases and let's create a local VM database. And there is local VM. Now when I do that I like to use a little trick and that is to paste all my database information in a text file. In this case, I use RoboForms safe notes. And uh, if you wonder what RoboForm is, it's a great utility that everybody should have. Keeps your passwords and allows you, among other things, to create encrypted text files. Now, of course, I'm going to delete all this, so it's not going to be that important that it's encrypted, but it's important that you keep track of what you're doing. Let's create a user. I'm going to create a local VM user. And I'm going to use the password generator here. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to tell it to use the password. Create the user. And now let's copy this password over here. And let's copy the username over here. There is one more step now. We have to choose local VM user and the local VM database. Of course, you have to change this with your own <laughs> username and database and click on add. We are actually assigning all privileges to this user for that database. Forget this step and it'll never work. And we are done.